Hey guys, my name is Sharon and welcome to my first YouTube video. I wanted to start YouTube for a while, but thought the best first video idea should be on my portfolio. So I recently got accepted into Parsons, the new school for design. I applied my major as fashion design. Yeah, I wanted to share my portfolio with you guys for you to get another example of students' work and to give you some tips and advice of what I wish I knew to get accepted. Not only get accepted, but to get a scholarship. Luckily for me, I got a generous scholarship in my opinion. I got around half my tuition off. I remember the exact amount, I'll put it um, somewhere down on the screen below. But yeah, I understand how expensive Parsons is. And if any of you want to hear some advice that I learned and applied in school and through my art, just keep watching. I forgot to even like log in to so for this year, the portfolio application was due January 15th and you had the option to submit 8 to 12 portfolio pieces with 1 to 3 extra pieces as part of the Parsons Challenge. Besides that, you also have to do the common application, the personal essay, and then the Parsons Challenge essay. So my first piece is a photography series called The City in Abstraction. This one, I was inspired by the blurred lights I'd see downtown. I was also playing with long exposure with my camera and I thought the amount of light going through represented like the movement of people and the energy. My second is titled Misunderstood and <laughs> this one might be kind of controversial. It is the portrait of Jesus but not because it's a portrait of him but the background is actually ripped Bible pages. <laughs> I consider myself a religious person and I took the inspiration of this prejudice of how religion is sometimes twisted and seen as hateful, which I don't believe it is. So from that, I literally ripped up Bible pages and crumpled them, turned them upside down to show a metaphorical twisting of words of the Bible. It took me like about two weeks to do. Um, it was on canvas board. Uh, with magazine clippings and acrylic paint just for some face details. The third piece is called Potential and it's essentially a mock textbook of what I view the public education system as. The inspiration for this one came from a TED talk I watched called Do Schools Kill Creativity? If I see a link for it, I'll try to put it down here. For a long part of my life, I was trying to excel in math and I felt the public education system kept trying to like push you to be one person. And because of that talk, um, really compelled me to make a book about this. Inside, it has instructions on like how to act or how to be successful. All this ideas about success which don't resonate with me. It's not about money, the cars you have, but instead releasing your creativity and for you to be your own self. This one was made out of foam board, gouache, and watercolor on the inside. Something I wanted to say about inspiration should come from something that personally resonates with you. If you think school and how it suppresses you, first thing that comes to my mind is a student who's at a desk who's like chained to the desk and has like an A like crushing them on top of their head but that's very cliche. When I was at National Portfolio Day, he was basically saying how you want to distinguish yourself as an artist who just screams that it's yours. Whenever someone sees this work, be able to distinguish yourself from every other artist. You know what, actually, maybe later I'll do another video showing my four National Portfolio Day compared to like my recent one, which I'm showing now. Next is a series of paintings called Influence. And the inspiration for this one was thinking of how I became the person I am today. And I realized it was from all the time I spent with the friends and family that I love most. If you see at the top, there are series of four paintings and each one of them is a different person that I tried to represent with colors. And then from all those colors, I combined it into the giant painting below which represents myself. Something else he told me was, it doesn't matter how well you can draw if there's no idea. You may draw the best, most realistic portrait ever, but that basically just makes you a photocopier. I was about to submit a still life drawing of like my makeup counter, but yeah, they said they didn't like that kind of stuff. The next piece is titled Selfish. This is a reflection of modern day society. So when I took like empty water bottle and soda cans and filled like fake crumpled money inside and like pins and needles to represent how all we do is consume money and in turn our hearts become cold and sharp like pins and needles. The next artwork is actually a sketchbook page for the previous artwork. 
just to show my thought process and how I came up with the idea, how I developed it. The seventh piece I submitted is probably my weakest and it's called The New Generation. It's about like integration of culture, youth, and technology. It's not that bad, but there's nothing really special to it. There's no like real intention with the colors or why this material. After going to Portfolio Day and the representative completely like roasting me, I think I'd spent around like nine, ten hours every day just working on my art. So what I do was like the first day I get the inspiration, think it over, develop my idea, go to the store, buy the material that night. Next day, just work on it completely. Third day, finish it up and then get my next inspiration do my next piece and just continually do that for like two months. Afterwards, I submitted more of a sculptural piece. It's called The World Moves On um, and this is reflecting on my story of moving from New York to Toronto in 2016. And I thought at first how I was really sad and like depressed to go, but then thinking if I were to look at the earth from a satellite, I'd realize, you know, there's a lot of light which symbolizes life. and no matter where I go, I'm going to meet new people and it's all going to be good. Since I was applying for fashion design, I should submit some sort of like fashion piece. So for this one, it's like a book like experimental thing based on the idea of where gender comes from and how our perceptions of what defines female and male and to like a new style. Even though I was applying for fashion design at the time, the representative told me that he doesn't care what my major is, he just wants to know that I can think about my art. Be intentional about what colors, material, objects, symbols, what metaphors you try to use in art. Afterwards, it's another photography series called Project Heritage and I did a little pun with uh, the first word, it's either project or project. I was thinking about the multicultural cities, especially living in Toronto, and reflecting on modern day selves compared to our ancestry. Afterwards, this is probably my strongest piece in the portfolio portion. It's called Just Don't Be Nervous. This is a play on the anxiety I faced during high school, how frustrating it was for other people not to understand what it's like, that it's something that you don't want to go through. So I really wanted to create some awareness for it. If someone could literally literally see and feel what it'd be like, this is how it should be. I created like wire mask sculptures. When you put the mask on, it's actually heavy, so it represents the weight that you feel when you have anxiety. Because this piece resonated strongest with me, it served as the basis for my Parsons challenge. Oh wait, no, I'm kidding. My absolute last piece is, yeah, based on that anxiety, and it's just a sketchbook page of my thought process. So for the Parsons challenge, you take one piece from your portfolio and make one, two, three extra pieces from that. The first piece in my Parsons challenge is the portrait series titled Fade and it was charcoal on newsprint. This one was about the progression of feeling normal and like calm to slowly deteriorating into your anxious state. The next is titled overthinking. When I was thinking about what other things anxiety could give me, it made me realize how anxiety never made me sleep at night. One side of a pillow represented like the anxious side while the other side of the pillow represented you sleeping well without anxiety. The last piece in my Parsons challenge was just a mind map of how I got all my ideas for steps one to three. I never thought they the concept was the most important thing when submitting your portfolio. What they're thinking is, you already have a thought process of the artist, but all the technical skills can be learned. So how well you draw isn't as important to them as the idea. So for all of this, I realized you want to distinguish your own voice from everyone else's. Also another thing, you should definitely go to National Portfolio Day. If I didn't go to National Portfolio Day, I wouldn't have gotten accepted. Try to find some in your area, go to nationalportfolioday.com, see where they are, and make sure you put it in your calendar. It's also helpful to write down every inspiration inspiration or idea that you can draw upon. A lot of the artwork that I did, I was basing it on my own perception of the world or memories I had, like an event or moment that changed your perception on a certain subject. Now for the academic portion, I remember thinking to myself, if grades really matter, I do. I would just take the easy classes, get the A, just get it out of there so you can just focus. For SAT, it's not required, you don't have to submit it like I didn't. So for some concluding thoughts, just to guess with how much scholarship they give, I feel they want to see if you'll be fine regardless if you go to art school or not. Like if you get one year of scholarship, then I think that means you already gained the knowledge and the skills necessary to do well without that one year. Oh, and like art class, should you go to like a portfolio class? I did go to art class for a bit, but 
it's not as helpful. Our classes was nice to begin with, but later on I grew to know that it doesn't matter. I feel classes were just there to serve as a guideline. A basic recap, take inspiration from things that are personal to you, be intentional in the materials, the subject, the drawing style, do everything for a reason. Go to National Portfolio Day so you can get advice from a representative one-on-one. -on -one. Don't focus on your grades so much as your art. The fifth thing I would say is they just want to see that you'll be okay on your own. So yeah guys, that is it for my accepted Parsons portfolio. I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you want to see anything more, just leave a comment down below or literally DM me on Instagram. I'll try my best to get back to you. So yeah, good luck on your portfolio guys. I'll see you next time.